Right, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, and so probably everyone here knows, but just in case, um, boiling hits a tripsy is a pulsed focus ultrasound technique uh, that uh, results in bubble formation due, due to rapid heating uh, from shock-induced heating. Um, and although the initial mechanism involves heating, uh, when delivered over low duty cycle, it produces non-thermal uh, mechanical to tissue destruction as a result of acoustic fountaining. Um, and we've been developing uh, this technique for a non-invasive uh, treatment of kidney cancer as well as others. Um, and uh, previously, our group has shown that uh, the ability to uh, ablate uh, RCC in vivo is, is feasible uh, using the Ecker rat, uh, which is a uh, naturally occurring uh, RCC model. Uh, the rats are heterozygous for the tubular sclerosis 2 gene. Uh, and by one year of age, all rats uh, develop multifocal uh, kidney tumors. Um, and in these studies, we've shown that, uh, at least over the short term, uh, there's uh, noticeable immunologic changes, uh, specifically alterations in circulating and intrarenal cytokines, uh, as well as increased intratumor uh, CD8 positive T cells. Um, and uh, as many know, there's well-described immunologic aberrations in RCC. Um, and so essentially, we set out to answer the question of whether or not we could observe long-term immunologic changes uh, as a result of our treatments in this model. Um, and so uh, Ecker rats, uh, who had a tumor at least six millimeters in size, uh, or wild-type syngeneic rats were randomized uh, in a one-to-two fashion to either a sham procedure targeting uh, the, a kit, the largest tumor with B-mode ultrasound or histotripsy targeting approximately 50% of the tumor. Uh, and then the rats were survived for either 7, 14, excuse me, or 56 days. Um, we then performed uh, flow cytometry, uh, analyzing spleens, uh, tumor-draining lymph nodes, uh, as well as uh, the uh, treated kidney uh, or uh, tumor, as, and as well as the contralateral kidneys and tumors as well. Um, and then we did multiplex assays to assess uh, for intrarenal cytokines. Uh, so just so everyone has kind of an idea of what we see, um, and the left-hand picture is a, is a tumor treated uh, and was survived for seven days, and you can see the, the characteristic uh, homogenized tissue uh, in the focal volume. Uh, and over the course of eight weeks, this, this lesion uh, essentially com contracted and formed a small scar, as you can see on, on the right, uh, with essentially collapse of the tumor, uh, essentially involuting around that, uh, which, which is the lower figure. Um, uh, and this is similar to, to results published using other histotripsy techniques and other models as well. Um, and so when we looked at the immune uh, response, uh, essentially have the data organized by sort of dendritic cells and antigen processing cells, uh, CD4 positive, and then CD8 positive T cells. Um, and so when we looked at dendritic cells, we saw no significant differences at any of the time points uh, and in any of the tissues that we looked. Um, uh, and then looking at CD4 positive T cells, when we looked at uh, total uh, cell counts uh, or Tregs, we saw no differences. Um, but when we looked at the subpopulation of effector memory uh, T cells, um, there seemed to be maybe some signal uh, over the short term uh, with significantly elevated uh, CD4 positive effector memory T cells uh, in the treated tumor versus sham. But when you look at the curves, you can see there's sort of a similar trend in when we treat just the normal kidney. Uh, and so we weren't quite sure what to make of that, and this is a, something of significance or not. Um, uh, and when we looked at CD8 positive T cells, similarly, when we looked at total numbers of CD8 positive T cells, there were no differences in any of the tissues we looked at. Uh, however, uh, similarly, when we looked at the effective memory T cells, um, there was some significant differences, uh, both in the spleen uh, as well as in tumor uh, draining lymph nodes. Um, that was significant out to eight weeks uh, after treatment. And here, unlike the case of the CD4 positive effective memory cells, uh, the that relationship seemed to be specific to treating the tumor and not the kidney. Um, and we also looked at uh, central memory T cells as well, and we saw similar relationships. Um, and then we looked at the tumors themselves. Um, because we were trying to assess histology as well, we only looked at the tumors in a subset, so we didn't quite have the, the statistical power, but you can see uh, in the figure on the left that the relationship is essentially identical uh, for CD8 positive effector memory T cells uh, in the tumors. Um, and when we looked at the contralateral kidney, which is incorporated the figure on the right, I know it's busier, but you can see at 56 days, we saw this rise not only in the, the treated kidney, but also in the contralateral uh, kidney as well, um, suggesting that it may be homing to tumors in general. Uh, we then uh, looked at intrarenal cytokines, uh, and over the, the shorter term time periods, we didn't see any significant differences. Uh, however, at 56 days, you can see there was significantly increased interferon gamma, 
IL-10 and TNF-alpha um, in histotripsy-treated uh, tumors versus sham, uh, and sort of a similar trend in IL-6. Uh, and so in summary, uh, histotripsy ablation of RCC, uh, but not kidney, it appears to be associated with specific changes in the immune system. Uh, and these include uh, possibly increased uh, effective memory CD4 positive T cells, uh, as well as increased splenic uh, and uh, tumor-derived lymph node uh, CD8 positive effector memory T cells, uh, uh, as well as uh, similar trends in the kidney. And then we also see an increase uh, in uh, cytokines in the treated kidneys as well. Um, and so in conclusion, uh, histotripsy of the kidney appears well tolerated in this model uh, with near complete healing by 56 days. Uh, and despite the kidney appearing uh, healed, there seems to be long-term uh, immunologic changes observable in the kidney at that time point. Uh, in the future, we hope to further characterize the on oncologic and immunologic impacts of these findings. Thanks a lot. This paper is open for questions. Not sure. It's a great presentation. I just had a quick question regarding the effector memory compartment and the gating for it. Did you have a CD62L negative, CD44 double negative population? We did, yeah. And what were the changes you associated in that particular compartment? Was it a change of cells going from the double negative compartment into the CD44 positive CD62L negative compartment, or was it a transition from naive to effector memory? Yeah, um, it's hard for me to, I guess I, to answer that question, I struggle a little bit in that, you know, statistically speaking, we didn't see any significant changes in the other cell populations to, to sort of point us down that path, I guess. Is that, I'm not sure that answers your, your question or not, but. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have a question. Yeah, Did you see any delay in the growth of, uh, of additional lesions within this model? That's a great question. Um, one of the benefits of this model is that it is an endogenous model um, with an attacked immune system. One of the drawbacks is hard to do manipulations. They have multiple tumors, um, and we're in the process of, of trying to go back through all the images. Uh, it's very difficult because you know, we have some tumors only two or three millimeters, and so trying to accurately measure that in ultrasound over time is difficult. Um, so it's something that we're hoping to answer, but so far we're, we're still immersed in the data. And one other question. Um, did you look at macrophages? Uh, we did. Uh, we didn't see anything significant okay. for either M1 or M2 macrophages. Great. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.